I started data science when I was back in class 8. And everyone mocked me that I'm not going to get any job in data science because it requires high set of profile and high set of degrees like masters or PhD degrees out there. And several people rejected me and trolled me for not being able to speak English fluently. And it took me eight months from them to get a high paying data science job in an international firm which pays even more than what Google India pays to their software engineer per month. And from then, I backed several international offers from several countries like Germany, UK, US, Netherlands, and etc. I went through several courses, books, and outdated courses, learning from the unexperienced instructors, and I was literally thinking what to do the one unique thing that will help me to beat all of this so-called masters and PhD guys. And I found a way to find that unique thing. And now I'll help you to get the or streamline that learning part that will also help you to find that specific unique thing that will help you to get a high paying job without the need of high level degrees and beating those high level degrees guys. So if even an 8th class guy can do it then why not you. So let's start with what are the major mistakes which most of the data science beginners and aspirants do initially. They think data science what is taught on YouTube and what is shown on YouTube by those so called data science gurus is quite different from what instructors showcase you on YouTube. And second mistake is most of the people follow a general framework given by those so-called online people or YouTube teachers and stuff. They follow the framework to do a particular project or do follow a particular thing. That's absolutely wrong. Data science is not about making a framework for doing stuffs. It's more about to develop your thinking ability to make your own framework. And that's the second major mistake which we usually see. Now, usually people fail to understand the core of machine learning, which is the basis of any machine learning jobs available right now. And people jump to natural language processing, deep learning, reinforcement learning because of the people or the teachers who are, in, who are on YouTube telling them the roadmap of learning data science. Bro, this used to happen a long back. This used to happen in 19, 2000, uh, I think 19, 2018. Now the scenario has completely changed. The dynamics has completely changed. You're thinking that you're going to, going to get a job with learning all of this deep learning shit and stuff. Bro, listen, it will definitely help you. But if you don't have the core machine learning, forget about the job. You'll not even get the interview out there. Now they fail to understand the differentiation between the framework code which you so-called YouTubers gives, gives to you and the quality and production ready code which is usually the, the most important and the most underrated and very unaware thing among beginners out there. People fail to understand the, the importance of quality code the importance of the design patterns the importance of writing code in a way that is production level they even don't know about it. Last but not the least Data science or machine learning is not just about learning algorithms, learning numbers. It's about communication. It's about convincing. It's about how well you tell the stories through data and people forget that as well. People keep on learning, you know, big, big algorithms, like they learn big topics. But listen, if there's a guy who knows average data science and ML and has an excellent communication skill and a guy who's a very tal talented but does not have a communication skill, this guy is going to win. And that's very, very clear because things can be learned in jobs. But this thing, which they usually require, so you're capable of not only learning some of the things, but also expansion of other topics too. So how to neglify all of these mistakes so that you don't get into a trap of all of these mistakes. The first and the foremost decision which you have to take in your data science journey or neglifying all of this mistake is taking a decision on where and how to learn data science machine learning. So I've added three videos, three road roadmap videos, which is among the most popular video online. I've published on ML roadmap, data science and ML ops. And all of these three has a unique way of approaching and a realistic way, not a shortcut, the hard work, the hard way to actually reach to the conclusion. And very few people reach to the con conclusion. I may plan to have another batch for my code machine learning course, which might be coming out very, very soon. And now, and when you're going through all of these learning stages, I suggest to not make some of the mistakes and try avoiding these mistakes if possible. Avoid passive learning. Don't just watch videos. Most of the people just watch videos and they think that, they un that they're understanding. No, you're not understanding you're just watching and that's something which you have to avoid when you go through a particular try to see that try to take a look in a greater detail implement that make notes out of it even the notes is provided along with make sure that you're able to understand the concept very very clearly and completely so in that case even you have to, you have to spend freaking 10 hours on the particular topic i suggest you to do this because i've seen my most successful students have spent hours in understanding a particular concept by their own and the second mistake which i ask all 
almost all my students to avoid is pass the phase of downfall. 99% of the student, whatever field they're learning, they meet with the phase of a downfall when they're learning something. So when they start learning new things, they're very excited in starting, but after some time, they started to feel demotivated. They're not able to understand literally anything in that particular topic. And that's the phase of downfall. And the downfall is like your, your, your journey starts like with excitement and then downfall starts and downfall is steady for the next three to four months. Yes, for the next three to four months. And then suddenly you start realize, realizing concept and the growth is exponential, it never comes down. So most of the people fail at this stage. You know what they think? They think that it's not my thing. I'm not able to understand. Let's leave it in the second month itself. Several I've seen, several students I've seen, they'll just leave in this. But I've seen most of the Anton students passing this phase. Whoever got in the big companies, they've passed this particular phase. They were like, hey, Ayush, I'm not, I'm not able to understand anything. They used to literally cry in front of me. And I should say them that 99% of the people face it. You're not, not the only one. Please pass this anyhow, any like just pass this up because if you constantly keep on trying trying for the next three 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 to four months your growth will be exponential in my journey as well i have faced several downfalls not only one three times i was class eight student i was not having a required sort of knowledge to get started with this my downfall was three times in this whole journey but I keep kept on resisting that. I kept on learning. And then after eight months of successful and hustling all those things, I got my first successful job out there in an international firm. Don't get distracted towards big topics and names like deep learning, NLP, computer vision, all of this are shits, bro. If you don't know the core ML and a core data science, you're not going to get a job. First, get clear with what core ML is and what core data science is. Understand this thing. You'll automatically understand any big topics which comes into the place. Now, this third mistake which I generally want you to avoid is avoid following frameworks and avoid using frameworks and avoid making basic basic projects which what is shown on YouTube. Titanic bro seriously? <laughs> Titanic project is not bad because of the idea, but instead is bad because of the implementation of it. Several people doing it from Jupyter Notebook. Bro, seriously, make it production level, make it MLOps level, which is the new, which is the dynamics has changed from back then. Now the idea does not matter in the project. How you've implemented it, it matters. One of our students has implemented Titanic in such a way that he got the interview call from one of the biggest data science consulting firm out here. And that's the difference between implementation and how you implement this. So I really want to talk about two phases of learning, code learning and practical learning. So let's first of all understand what is code learning. Code learning is more sort of understanding the core and the fundamentals, which usually sets up the base of anything. If your base is not strong, you will be not able to survive in the industry for a long term. You have to make your first of all base strong. I have so many videos, roadmaps, and even the courses available for absolutely free, which got millions of views. MIT even recommended one of my course out there. So I suggest um, one of my road roadmaps or courses, or you can enroll in my paid course too, which might be coming out very soon, but not sure exactly the date. Second one is practical learning. So practical learning is one of the most important steps in your data science journey. For practical learning, follow the principles of building production grade machine learning projects, not just a simple Jupyter notebook. Market dynamics are changing. In data science, people require 50% engineering and 50% data science. In ML engineering, people require 90% engineering and 10% machine learning. So market dynamics are changing. Even Elon, Chipu and all these big guys have confirmed this data. So please make sure to not rely on Jupyter notebook and be the production grade and Android students has already been achieving this throughout the time. Personally, I worked as an MLOps engineer in a very big MLOps framework which is ZenML over there and worked with the core team. And I know how to actually the market dynamics will change eventually from a very Jupyter notebook kind of standpoint to mandatory MLOps in the job description. Please, it will add a cherry on the top of your resume. Now, once you have the project, you need to showcase it to the world. Now, showcasing and presenting is one of the most important part. And I've had a talk about this in my previous videos too. But I'm telling you something really interesting in this that what you can usually do, I'll take one example of my customer satisfaction project. In the front of the screen, you're seeing the customer satisfaction project. You see how well my readme has been documented with the full of diagrams and helping people to how they can run it and how the folder structure is, how the code has been written following the design patterns and the software engineering principles, right? So all of this, you can clearly see the difference between what the Jupyter Notebook and what's the production grade looks like. And I suggest everyone to write their, you know, documentation and read me or the latex file because HRs are usually non-technical or little bit technical. If they see, they are not going to run this project. They instead going to see the upper level. This, oh my God, it's so nice, nicely presented. And then you eventually get an interview call.
Now it's time for you to apply to jobs. I have given a brief description about how to apply to jobs in my previous video. You can go and check that out. But one of the cold emails which I usually ask my students to send it, which can be seen in front of the screen, that how well the like we have included the personalized project for the particular company to take a look that we have devoted time even we you haven't asked for it, right? You have built the project which you think that which you require and we have already built it. Right? That's this one point. Another point is we have given the introduction video of us where you're literally coming on a video and then speaking about your, uh, ourself. That shows how our confidence level and everything, even they don't need to ask us the intro video. We have already given to them. Infographic resume, right? And all these things have already provided to them. So this actually helps them to review your profile without being delayed. And they think that you're so time, time efficient, you're given every information which they require to evaluate your, your profile. So everything like all these emails, all the guides is presented in the description don't forget to check out the guides which are personally built for all of you and for my co-students but eventually i'm making it for absolutely free last but not the least rejections is a part of journey rejections might not happen only because of your skills rejection happens because they might don't want to hire any one of them they, they don't want to continue the position right so rejections are a part of learning each one is a learning opportunity for all of you out here a bonus tip which i really want to give is networking go to the local events go to the local workshops which is happening in your particular area if you're in bangalore you can just go around and just look out for events out there go and talk with so many people talk with people out there talk with founders and understand it right and then you'll be eventually seeing that people are getting to know about you and networking with people in person and then eventually you might get a poor opportunity which might be really beneficial for you so networking is one of the most important aspects it will just cost you some of the bucks to actually go to that event and then come back it may happen that you apply to hundreds of jobs and get the reply from one of them but if you follow what I've told you will be getting from most of them and that's I guarantee so that's it for, for, for this video I'll be catching up you next bye bye